Okay, we're gonna look at solving this application problem. Uh, so we went through a little bit in class the derivation of the formulas for this. So you don't necessarily need to worry about that. If you've had physics, it does go through that in your physics book. It starts with a homogeneous equation and then eventually gets to the non-homogeneous form where you do have an external voltage applied across the surface, um, across the circuit. So. Uh, here, though, is the form of the equation we're going to be working with. I don't expect you to have this memorized for this class, uh, but I do expect you to be able to use it and to answer the question uh, that it's asking you to answer here. All right, so there's a little bit to be careful with units. Those of you that have had a lot of physics probably are used to being careful with those, but students who maybe haven't had as much physics maybe aren't quite as, as uh, used to that. So there are some prefixes, milli and micro, on some of the units here, so I do need to be sure that I treat that appropriately. And so for L, uh, we're given in the problem that L is 160 milli, millihertz, uh, millihenries, 160 millihenries. So I need to put that in henries, though. So milli is times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, and let's see, we're given R is 68 ohms, so we'll just leave that as 68. And we're given that C is 99 microfarads, so times 10 to the negative 6 farads. Uh, and then we're given a velocity, but uh, uh, we're given a voltage function, but in our uh, equation here, notice that we've got V prime, so we're going to need to use V prime of T. So we're just going to take the derivative of our voltage function. Uh, so let's see, we get um, 4,000 cosine of 100 T is our V prime of T. All right, and so once I've got all my numbers either handed to me and or written in the right form so that I have the right kind of units, uh, and the appropriate function to put in here. It's just a matter of putting everything into the equation. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and write that down. I'm going to use primes instead of derivatives here. And I'm going to use a capital I just so it's a little bit easier so I don't get that mixed up with some ones here. Uh, so I double prime plus R over L 68 over 160 times 10 to the negative 3 I prime, of course that simplifies some, plus 1 over L times C, uh, times I. Alright, so here is our differential equation with I as the dependent variable and T as the independent variable. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we've got 1 over L. Times my V prime. I'm just going to put that here on the numerator. Okay, and so we've got a differential equation that we know how to solve here. Um, but it's kind of a mess. The, in physics uh, and in real life, a lot of times the numbers are not so pretty. And so you've got a lot of kind of messy coefficients to deal with here. And so rather than getting hung up in the actual calculations, though, I want to think a little bit more broadly about what it's asking us to find. And if I can do that without necessarily churning through some calculations with a lot of ugly coefficients. All right, so it's asked us to find the steady state current in this RLC circuit. All right, so in general, when we solve a second order linear homogeneous differential equation, non-homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, we know that our solution would be of the form y equals yh, the solution for the homogeneous part, plus yp. Here we have i instead of y for our dependent variable. And then we've got the homogeneous part and the particular part. In terms of the applications, uh, the homogeneous part eventually is going to die out. We can actually go ahead and verify that by finding our um, zeros of the characteristic polynomial. This is going to be our transient solution. 
transient current. It's going to die out reasonably quickly, depending on what the, the constants actually turn out to be. And then eventually, the current is going to approach this part that is the steady periodic or steady state solution. So really, this is all that it's asking for here. It's not really asking for the part of the transient solution. And so that is our solution for the non-homogeneous part where, that we get from making a guess and then finding the constants for our guess using the method of undetermined coefficients. It's fairly straightforward here, except that you've got some kind of yucky coefficients to deal with. So I'm not going to go through all the algebra in the middle. I want you to kind of focus on the method and the actual kind of overall idea here of what it's actually asking you for. I do maybe want to think about the transient solution for a moment because finding that steady periodic solution, I'm going to be making a guess. A cosine of 100t plus B sine of 100t. And that is a good guess unless my transient solution has the same frequency that also has 100t in the solution. So we should verify that that really is a transient solution. It really dies out that I don't have these solutions as part of that. So you should make sure that you don't have uh, that situation going on here. It won't if you think through the algebra of finding the zeros of this characteristic polynomial. You should see why neither of these will turn up in this transient solution. Right? You're only going to get functions like this if you have pure imaginary zeros of your characteristic polynomial, and that's only going to happen if this middle coefficient is zero. So I'm not going to have pure imaginary zeros of my characteristic polynomial. So these functions would not show up here in my transient solution, so this is a good guess. You then differentiate your guess, find I prime and I double prime, plug it into the differential equation. You get your system of equations, you solve that. So you find your A and your B. And again, that's using the method of undetermined coefficients, if you need to look that up. Um, most of the time in the homework, in the online homework, they will then ask you to go ahead and convert that using that identity that we've talked about. So we're going to use the identity then that a cosine of omega t, here our omega is 100, plus b sine of omega t, omega is 100 on this one, is going to be c cosine of omega t plus phi. And you can use that identity to figure out your c. So the coefficient here is from Pythagorean theorem. c equals square root of a squared plus b squared. And the phi can come from the uh, several different places, cosine, sine, or tangent. I'm going to use the tangent one. Tangent phi is b over a, this constant over that constant. So you'll go ahead and use those and plug those in. Um, so for this one, uh, we get, I'm not going to find the phi here, but really what I want to focus on here is the C. So for this one, when you do those calculations, uh, you get that C is to four decimal places 0 .4705. 0 0.4705. All right, so you can think about the eventual behavior of this system even without churning through all those other uh, all those other calculations, you don't necessarily need to find this in order to answer the question. Uh, I can figure out that eventually the current approaches this IP, this part dies out. So eventually the current approaches this steady state solution and we've got an amplitude of 0 0.475 and we've got a period of 2 pi over 100 or a frequency of 100 over 2 pi. And so you can do a lot of analysis of what this solution is eventually going to behave like without having to turn through a bunch of calculations. The other thing you might be interested in here is, is the phase angle. You can go ahead and calculate that once you have your B and A if you need it. 
but you can answer a lot of questions about the eventual behavior of the current through this circuit by sort of skipping through the calculations that are not entirely necessary to answer the actual question and focusing just on the parts of the problem that it's really asking you about. So there's one like this in your homework, so look over that one, try it. Be sure to let me know if you have questions. The calculations can be a nightmare. And so if you end up in some mess of calculations and you can't figure out what you did wrong, send me a picture of your work. I'll be glad to look over it and let you know if you're on the right track or not.